Hi friends, Susanna here today and I am super excited to be bringing to you a little hack video today. Um, a couple of weeks ago I sewed up this dress using the Chapman cardigan pattern and I thought it was super cute so I wanted to come on here and show you just exactly how I did it and show you how easy it is to grab our patterns and create something, hack them to create something that you love if we don't already have a pattern for it. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly what I did to add the tear uh, to make sure that it buttons up on the front and how I created this beautiful flutter sleeve using only the Chapman cardigan pattern. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is cut out my fabric and figure out exactly what I want to use. I'm gonna use my front and back and I'm gonna use my sleeve. I'm not going to cut a, a band because I am just going to do it a little bit different and I'm gonna show you how. And I'm also uh, changing my sleeves, so I'll do that after. So first I'm going to cut my fabric and I'm going to do the front um, and the back exactly the same way except for I'm going to be adding a little bit of length. Um, I want it a little bit longer before the ruffle actually even is there. Uh, but then I'll add more length um, by adding that ruffle. Now if you wanted to go straight down you could do that um, as well. Now one of the things um, from my dress is that I like to, I wanted to size up um, so that I could have a looser fit. But if you wanted a um, tighter fit, I would stay with your size. I went up one size from what I where I fit at. I would stay in your size, and then I might go out a little bit here at the at the hip, so that it's not too tight at the bottom. But everything else keeps the same. Um, so that is up to you, depending on what kind of fit you're going for. I like the looser fit, so that's why I am. Um, don't go in a size up. Then on the bottom, I am going to add about three inches. And it, this all depends also on how much you want to add to it. Um, if you want to do more than three inches or not, uh, depending on what size, I mean, what length you want. So I've got my ruler and that's a two inch ruler. And so I'm going to add like an extra inch and I'm going to cut. I have these handy uh, scissors that I'm going to be using. These are uh, electric scissors. And I am going to show you in a video a little bit later all about them. I'm still testing them out before I actually tell you that I love them or not. But so far, so good. So that's what I'm using. Now, I mentioned that I have a flutter sleeve and obviously this is our pattern piece right here. It comes with just a regular sleeve. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. You wanna grab somewhere where you're gonna create a new pattern piece. And I'm just using paper I already have and I'm just kind of gluing it together. Um, uh, actually, old uh, wrapping paper usually help. Uh, it's really, really good to use or anything like that. But I just have this paper sitting here, so that's what I'm using. I'm going to grab my sleeve. I'll fold this paper in half. This is like leftover paper from pattern. I'm just trying, just recycling. I'm recycling. And I'm going to shape up my sleeve. I'm gonna draw it here on this paper pattern. My new, this will be, it's just, I'm just drawing the exact same line of the pattern. And you're gonna figure out how long you want your uh, flutter sleeve to be. I'm just kind of gonna go by this length. The short sleeve, there's no short sleeve cut line, but you wanna measure kind of, you can measure from the um, arm side here, down however long you want it to be. And when I look at that, uh, it's about, I don't know, six inches. Let me measure. It is, oh no, it's only like four and a half, wait, where does it go to? It goes to right there. It's about um, four and a quarter inches, it looks like. So that's how long. And I think that that's good for me. I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna cut out my pattern piece. The reason why I did two pieces of paper is because I wanna open my uh, sleeve pattern. I'm gonna uh, slash and spread. So I've got my pattern piece here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines. So here's my middle line and I'm just kind of drawing uh, lines all the way kind of up 
um, maybe a couple of inches away from each other because I'm going to be splitting this pattern up to open it wide. So I'm going to show you in a minute what I'm going to do. Okay, so there it is. Um, and I'm going to cut on these lines. All right, now I'm going to need another piece of paper because what essentially we want to do is we want to open, we want to keep the arm side the same. So this is why we drew it on. That's going to stay the same, but we want to open this up so that we create a bigger bottom area here. And that's what's going to make that flutter area come out here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it open like so and draw a pattern piece. And you know what? I'm just going to do half so that way it's, it's on the fold so they mirror so they're the same. So I guess I didn't have to cut both sides. Um, <clears throat> but you, I'm just, I just want it to be the same on both sides. So that's why I'm doing this. So I'm spreading this open as wide as you want it to be at the bottom. And then I'm going to use my pencil and just outline the arm side, go down. And then we're just kind of going around like so, just at the bottom underneath where it splits, where I opened it up. And so this is my new pattern piece. That This is just a simple, quick uh, way to create this pattern, this uh, a flutter sleeve. You have to be a little bit more precise if you're doing like a, a woven fabric, but with knits, they're very forgiving. So um, this will work. I know right here I have like a little point, so I'm just going to do that. And then up here, I might go up just a little bit to make it more rounded. Here's my, whoops, that was weird. There's my fold. Uh, so when I go to cut my fabric, what I want to make sure of um, is if I grab my pattern piece, and this is my arm side, if I go from that point and I kind of swivel it around, like swivel it around, swivel it around, you see that it's the same shape. It's the same shape. It's so let's right here, you move, they're still the same shape all the way around. See that? All the way around, it's the same shape and the same size. You want to make sure that that's the same because it this is what your arm size fits. So if this is different, that's not gonna work. So that that has to stay the same. This is what opens up down here. I hope that that was kind of helpful and um, understandable. So now I'm going to grab my fabric and cut out my sleeve. So you're gonna cut two of these on the fold. And I feel like I'm running out of fabric. Oh no. I don't know if I'm going to have enough for everything I need to do for this dress. No. I might need to um, see if I have enough for the ruffle. All right. So now I've got, this is my fold line right here. And I'm going to cut my sleeve. All right, when you're faced with this problem and you do not have enough fabric, um, there's a couple things you can do. You can get a different fabric or what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually cut two sleeves. So this one is supposed to be cut on the fold, but I don't have enough. So I'm going to cut two of them. Um, and what I'm going to do is then I'm going to piece them together at the shoulder seam. So I'll have a seam line at the shoulder seam. But this is also something for you to know. It's good to know for in case you ever have this problem and you want to know what to do. This is something that you can do. So if you're going to have a seam at the shoulder, then you're going to have to add seam allowance here to sew it together. And that's what I'm going to do. Really, the right thing to do would be to make sure you have enough fabric to begin with. But I didn't. So this is what's going to happen. And it's okay. I'm going to sew it together there to create a sleeve. I might do the same to the other one. Just put a seam there so that way I have a seam on both sides. All right. Now the next part is creating that bottom ruffle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure. I'm actually just going to use the bottom piece. This is the bottom of my pattern uh, piece. And I'm going to measure how uh, big that is. 
Um, when I measure it, go over here and measure it against my ruler. I have about 12 inches wide. So 12 times four because we've got, this is on the fold, so there's two and then two for the front as well. So 12 times four is 48. And then if you grab that and you times it by one and a half, which is how wide, how long extra I wanna add, the extra length I wanna, the extra width I wanna add, it's 72. So I'm going to cut a long strip at 72 inches. And then the height, it depends on how long, how much length you want to add uh, in a tier. And if I measure mine, I added six inches because then I had seam allowance and seam allowance. So I'm gonna make mine 72 inches uh, by six inches. So I'm gonna cut a big strip and obviously you can cut a st two strips um, and just cut them in half that way if your fabric is not long enough. All right, so I do not have enough of my dark blue to finish the ru bottom ruffle, but I found this other waffle that it's a lighter blue and it actually, it's kind of cool. Maybe will work. There is a light, lighter blue in this actual waffle right here, the dark waffle. So I'm hoping that that will kind of add to it and um, look good. We'll see. This is what happens when you don't um, figure out how much fabric you need before you start cutting your pattern. So let me give you that advice now um, while you're ahead. Make sure you have enough fabric. Um, I forgot that I had already made a top out of that other waffle, so I didn't have as much as I thought I did. Um, but that's okay. This, my, and that being super cute. What I'm gonna do is, because my fabric is pretty long but not long enough, I'm gonna fold it and cut two strips at 36 inches. Um, so then I'll have um, well, 36 and a half, because that way I have seam allowance to um, sew them together. I'm actually gonna cut at six and a half inches, so I have enough seam allowance. And if I need to cut it shorter, then I'll cut it shorter later, but I don't wanna end up uh, upset that I didn't cut it long enough. So I always like to add like a half an inch of leeway, just in case for some reason I, wanted more length. All right, so we can go ahead and start sewing. On this one, you know I'm going to go ahead and sew that together, right sides together. So I'll start, I'll do that, have it prepped already. And also I'm gonna sew my sleeves right sides together just because I created two pieces because I ran out. So I'll do that. And then I'm gonna grab my bodice and I'm going to match up the shoulders and sew right sides together. All right, now we're going to open up the arm size and sew on those sleeves. So here's my arm size and I've got my sleeve right here and I'm gonna match up that top seam, that top notch, the half right there and it should fit right on because like I said, we made sure that our arm side was the same as our original pattern piece. So we did not change the shape or the size of this arm side at all. So everything should still fit correctly on here other than the fact that it's going to be, um, have that flowy effect at the bottom. Oops. Make sure you're attaching the right side, the side that is curved and comes around is the side that you're attaching, not the big wide bottom. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and like I said, sew those sides together where here, meet here at the bottom of the sleeve and then sew all the way down the side and up the sleeve. And then I'm also going to, when I do that, go over to my sewing machine and put in a gathering stitch on that ruffle. So that way we can gather it to later on attach at the bottom. I'm using my longest stitch on my sewing machine and I'm gonna just do a basting stitch to gather. 
All right, so now that it's basically put together, the next thing I'm going to do is add the ruffle at the bottom and then I'm going to hem it all around the outer edge. I want to, instead of putting a band, I'm gonna end up hemming. So I'm gonna find the half of my bodice of the bottom and then I'm gonna grab my um, bottom piece and I'm gonna place that middle piece that I cut in half and so then I'm gonna gather one side to fit and then I'll gather the other side to fit that way pulling my bobbin thread and gathering All right, once that bottom has been sewn together, which it hasn't yet, but it will be, we're also going to hem the outer edge of the whole thing. So this will come in and we're just, I'm just going in and hemming all the way around the whole thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and steam it now. Um, I'm not, I don't usually uh, like pin my hems down, which you probably should. But a lot of fabrics, like with this fabric, I find that I can just give it a good steam and then it um, stays really nicely when I'm hemming. But you do what you gotta do and then you just, you're just you just gonna hem all the way around the whole front. I'm not going to um, add a band, I'm just going to hem under and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach them, close them up together. So I'm gonna hem this and I'm gonna hem um, my sleeve and the bottom of my skirt as well. All right, friends, we are almost done. This is looking super cute. I love it. I actually do like the blue at the bottom. It kind of brings it all together. It's not too much, but I think it looks good. I would have liked to do it all solid, but you know, sometimes you have to kind of go with the flow and change your mind, the whole situation, but I still think that this has turned out super cute. So what I did now was, once I was done hemming everything, and I have strings still hanging out everywhere, I just went ahead and tried it on and pinned it as tight as I want to. Um, you can make it looser so it's more of a plunging V or you can put it tighter. Um, it is up to you. Um, here's where you could try it on um, inside out if you want to take in a little bit of the width here at the top and just kind of sew it in a little bit. I, like I said, I like it loose fitting so that's the reason why I went with the over with the size up or you could also make a um, sash and tie it around the waist if you wanted to bring it in a little bit. This is all up to you. I just love it the easy relaxed way it is. I love how the sleeves turned out. I hope you love that. So what I'm going to do now, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, once I've pinned it all down, I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch it closed because I'm doing full buttons. Now you could put some interfacing on the inside and do actual buttons so you could have, it could open up. But because it's a knit pattern and it has a uh, V neckline and I can pull it in on and off through the neckline, I'm just going to close it all up all the way down to about right here where the opening is or you could go all the way down and then I'm going to add some buttons on top we're just gonna sew them on and I'll be done so I'm gonna go uh, sew it up put the buttons on and then I'm gonna show you what the final product looks like all right friends I am finished and I decided to just go ahead and not add buttons to this version and add a little sash here in the middle I kind of like uh, just having the little sash there and adds a little bit of extra emphasis at the waist I think these uh, gathered I mean this uh, flounce sleeves look adorable I just love how this turned out now for the sash I really only had a little bit of this fabric left so I have like one long strip 
literally and that's all it is it literally is just a long um, strip about four inches wide and I actually tied I actually cut two pieces and then I sewed them together at, and then that's it that's all I did because I didn't have any more fabric but if you want an actual sash you can go and use like the Tress Bell sash or uh, the South, 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 South Shore romper sash and it looks super cute I love it with the sash but I think also without the sash it looks very cute it's just more of a comfy loose fit um let me know below which version you like best do you like it with the sash or do you like it without and then let me know if you're gonna try this hack I hope that these hack videos are encouraging to you to know that you can grab a pattern that you love and create different things with it and do something fun and different and outside the box do not be scared. I know you can do it. And if you have any questions, come find us on Facebook where we have a huge group of sewers who are willing to help out and give advice and comments. And we just love that. Also, if you have a mash or if you have um, any sew that you're like, oh, I wish I knew if this is going to work or I wish um, Deanna would do this sew or whatever, just comment below and let me know. Um, you never know. I might be doing a video on that. I hope you had a great day. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.